Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my lab. Are you ready to learn? Yeah! Are you ready to have fun? Yeah! Well, we're going to do that throughout this program, but I want to caution you about a couple of safety matters that are very important. In my lab, we always obey the safety rules, so I'm going to put my goggles on and uh, as I do the experiments, and we have a fire extinguisher uh, right here, ready to be used, just in case something goes out of control. We're not planning on anything going out of control, <laughs> but it's ready as a safety precaution, and it is part of the safety regulations. And I'm going to put it on the side here where um, I can reach for it if it is needed. I also want you to be on the lookout not only for smoke and fire and so on, but there'll be some loud noises. And so when you see me put my ear protection on, I would like you to protect your ears from potential damage. And the way you do that is that you take both fingers and you stick them in your ear real tightly, OK? <laughs> so in doing science experiments, we always, always obey the safety rule. And the first experiment I'm going to do is rather a simple one. I'm going to take a match and strike it. Big deal. You came all the way here to see Dr. Shakashiri strike a match, right? I'm going to light this candle, because this is an example of what we call a combustion reaction. Combustion is when something burns. Uh, that means it combines with oxygen in the air, from the air, or from other sources sometimes and produces light energy, which is what we see with our eyes, and also some heat energy if you're close enough to the source of the combustion reaction. These are examples of what we call controlled combustion reaction. I have a propane tank right here, and I'm going to open it up. It's connected to this long wand, and there it is. Got your attention, right? This is an example also of a controlled combustion reaction. It's a beautiful yellow-orange flame. At the bottom of the flame, in fact, at the bottom of almost all flames, there's a nice blue tinge. I want you to think about that. Why is there a blue tinge at the bottom of all flames? So um, to uh, make sure that you're paying close attention, I want to ask you now, you see anything floating up in the air? What? <laughs> How many balloons are there? And what color are these balloons? Red. So there are four balloons, and each one of them is red and green? Each one of them? No. no. You have to make sense out of your observations, because communication in science is very, very important. So there are two red and two green. And these balloons are up in the air, held by strings. That means they have gases in them that are lighter than air. Some gases burn, and some other gases do not burn. And we're going to find out what's in those balloons now because I'm going to take this flame and hit and uh, try to touch one of the balloons. But we always obey the safety rules. So I can't put my fingers in my ears and do the experiment at the same time. So I'll do this. But I want you to protect your ears very, very well. Uh, I can't hear your reaction, but I can see some of you smiling. That means you don't have your ears well protected. Please protect your ears as we go to this first experiment right here. Oh. That balloon had in it the gas hydrogen. And hydrogen combined with oxygens in an uncontrolled combustion reaction. Do you know what we call uncontrolled combustion reactions? Explosions, yes. An explosion is a combustion reaction has gone out of control. What we always do in science is repeat the experiment. So we're going to do it again. And this time, make sure your ears are well protected and we're going to do it in the dark. So with the lights down, please. Here we go. <laughs> Did you see that ball of fire? Did you see it better with the lights on or with the lights out? That's something we have to keep in mind when we do experiments that release energy in the form of light. We do them in a darkened area so we can see them better. I'd like to ask you right now to look at the monitor because we're going to show you the same reaction but in slow motion. You won't hear any noise, but there is that big ball of fire. All right. We have 
two more balloons, and a whole lot of other experiments to do. What should I do next? More balloons or other experiments? <laughs> more balloons. OK, more balloons, you know what, right? So here we go. Make sure your ears are well protected because we move on to this next balloon right now. That balloon had in it a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. You know, in the air we have about 20% oxygen, but inside that balloon there was more than 20% oxygen, and that's why we heard a louder report. What do we always do in science? Repeat, Repeat the experiment. So let's do it one more time, and let's try it with the lights out, please. Ready? So, let's take another look in slow motion at the very same combustion reaction of hydrogen and oxygen. No sound, but a much faster reaction. You saw that, right? Do you like that? Yeah. Thank you. When we burn something that has carbon in it, like wax or fossil fuels, then we form carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is a gas at room temperature. It has no color, so it's invisible. We can't see it. And also has no smell, so we say it is odorless. But all of us know about carbon dioxide gas because we know about carbonated beverages. And what I want to do next is an experiment to show you how much carbon dioxide is really inside a bottle of uh, carbonated beverage or a can like this. So to do that, I'm going to use a baby bottle. You remember baby bottles? <laughs> This baby bottle has been slightly modified. What I have done is replaced the nipple that has the hole in it where the milk flows out. I've replaced that with the rubber bulb from a medicine dropper. I want to show you how strong this piece of rubber is by attempting to blow air into it, see if I can inflate it. Here we go. <laughs> it's a very, very strong piece of rubber. And I want to now open the can. Listen to this very familiar sound. You heard that little fizz, right? That's because we opened, we opened the can that has in it a lot of carbon dioxide pressurized, and it's open to the atmosphere. So I'll fill the baby bottle with the carbonated beverage, and what do you see? Bubbles. You see bubbles, you see fizz. What kind of bubbles are those? They're carbon dioxide bubbles. And they're coming out of the liquid because they're no longer pressurized. If they all come out of the liquid, then the, then the drink will go flat. You know, it doesn't taste so good then, right? So now I'll take the cap, put it on, and tighten it. What should I do next? Yeah. You've done this experiment before, huh? <laughs> and now you see you see how much carbon dioxide is really dissolved in that liquid. It's all coming out in this closed container, and it's able to inflate this strong piece of rubber that neither I nor any other human being can inflate with all the powers of their lungs. So now I'm going to try to open this up and see if I can do that without making a mess. Well, hey, made hey, but Sam. Hey, it's, but Sam. It's Professor Clint Sprout from the Wonders of Physics. Hey, Clint. Hey. Hey, but Sam, someone told me you wanted a rope. Yes, I want a rope, yes. Well, you know, we physicists like to help you chemists whenever we can, so I went out and tried to get you a rope. But you know, when I went to the hardware store, I asked for a three-foot-long piece of rope, and they said, well, we only have these two little short pieces. Oh. But did you know I'm a magician? No, I didn't know that. Well, uh, it came in very handy because I said, well, I'm a magician, and any magician can take two short pieces of rope and change them into one long piece.
Now, you know, I didn't really do that. I just made that up. But I did go to the hardware store and ask for a piece of rope. And they said, well, do you want the kind of rope that has two ends on one end and two ends on the other end? Or maybe you want the kind of rope that has two ends on one end and one end on the other end. <laughs> and I said, no, no, no. I just want the regular old kind of rope, the kind where when you tie a knot in the middle, you have a rope with three knots in it. <laughs> but you know, science and magic have a lot in common. We both do neat demonstrations that uh, boggle your mind. But you know the difference between a scientist and a magician? A magician never tells you how they do their tricks. And a scientist, you just can't get them to shut up about it. <laughs> But if you're interested in magic, studying a little science is very good preparation because all of their tricks are done using principles of science. And you know, there's another reason I wanted to stop by today. I wanted to congratulate Prof Professor Shakashiri because he has been elected president of the American Chemical Society. And I hear, I hear that's the largest scientific society in the whole world, so that's quite an honor. And also, he's been doing these shows for 41 years, and that amazes me. You must have started when you were like three years old. It was about three then, yes. Yeah. Well, I want to wish you another 41 years of uh, giving these uh, public shows. Thank you very much, Clint. Thank you very much. <laughs> Professor Clint Scott from the wonders of physics. Thank you so much. So here's a candle. Here's a flask. It has dry ice at the bottom. It's filled with the invisible carbon dioxide gas. So I'm going to pour the heavier gas down. And we learn more about a property of carbon dioxide gas, namely that it does not support combustion. All right. So let's move over here where I have several other candles on a set of steps. And I'm going to light these candles, starting at the top. How many candles do I have here? All right. All right. I have these candles. And I have a bigger flask here that I had put in some dry ice before, so it's filled with the invisible gas, carbon dioxide. And we know carbon dioxide gas does not, what, support combustion. So let's see if I can pour this down and what happens to the candles. Let's go back to those candles that are over here. And I want to try to light them, but uh, let's see if I can light them in a different way than I did before. So I light the one at the bottom. I take my carbon dioxide filled flask out of there. And what I have here is a propane tank, small propane bottle. And I have a beaker. The beaker is empty except for air. What I'm going to do is fill this beaker with propane gas. Propane gas has carbon in it, has hydrogen in it. It's a hydrocarbon. It is denser than air. And it also has an odor. So I open the valve, open the valve like this, and you'll be able to hear it come through. And it's dense, denser than air, so I'm going to move this up because I want to displace the air from in there. And it's all the way up, so I close the valve. Now this gas is invisible. It's denser than air. It's going to flow down the steps right here and light the candles, right? Well, at least, at least it lit the gas that's in here, right? <laughs> so, so, so what do you think is in here now? There's some carbon dioxide, right, from the combustion reaction. There's also a little bit of unburned propane. And there's a little bit of air. So I want to empty all the dense gases out because what I'd like to do is ask you if you want to see this again. 
Want to see it again? OK, then I have to fill it up again, right? And I have to fill it up with a gas denser than air, so nothing else should be in there. No carbon dioxide, because you know what the carbon dioxide does, right? All right, so I put this in here, and I turn the valve on, and I want to flush it out, make sure only propane is there. You see, it takes longer this time because of the, I want to make sure there's no carbon dioxide left in there. And you know what? Let's try to do this in the dark. All right? So here we go. So let's take a look at that in slow motion. All right. For the next experiment, <clears throat> I want you to focus your attention on these plastic bottles that I have over here. They have corks on the top and screws that are put in there, but they're not touching. I'll show you uh, a mock-up of what's in there. A cork here, and the screws are separated by a gap of about half a centimeter. And in each of these bottles, there's a small amount of a fluid, a little bit of alcohol ethyl alcohol, and I want to do an experiment where I would take a sparker and touch one of those nails and see if I can make the spark jump across the gap that separates the two nails, and we'll see what happens, okay? So I want to find my, oops, I don't have my sparker here. Can someone please bring up the sparker for me? Please, right now. Thank you, Bucky, thank you, Bucky. Hey, Bucky. Good to see you. Bucky is a very good science student. You see he's wearing his goggles. You see that, right? He obeys the safety rules. And Bucky also thinks that science is fun. So Bucky, let's do this experiment here. Uh, this is a really fun experiment. I, I hope it's fun. Let's see. All right, so we've got this sparker right here. Listen to it. There it is, okay, it gives off a spark. So, Bucky, you ready for this? Here we go, here we go. You saw that, right? The cork was ejected all the way there. We changed chemical energy into mechanical energy. Let's do it again here. Let's do it one more time, okay? All right, you like that? Hey, you, you caught it, right? So, uh, one more time? Yes, yes. Let's try that one in the dark. Let's see what happens in the dark here. Okay, here we go, here we go. All right. With the lights up, please, the lights up. I am really glad that you like this experiment because we're going to use this big bottle now. You see the two nails right here? There is the bottle, uh, the, the, uh, the cork on the bottle. And we have the alcohol at the bottom. We have this ready, we have the sparker, and we have Bucky Badger. So, Bucky. There you go, Bucky. You do it. All right, let's. One, two, three. Oh. That was pretty good, pretty good. So, Bucky, I know you are a very, very good student. But by the way, Bucky, you know this is the 41st anniversary of this program, so you don't really have to do 41 push-ups. Don't worry about that. No, <laughs> don't worry about that. No, don't worry about that. But, but I want to ask you, Bucky, uh, are you going to graduate on time? How many years is it going to take you to graduate? Wait a minute. Let me see. Let me see this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. I guess we are different, right? <laughs> but Bucky's going to graduate in four years, and everyone should try to finish their college education in, in four years. So, so Bucky, in order to finish your education in four years and graduate on time, you have to pass some exams. I know final exams are coming up now, and you probably, oh, no, you'll be, you'll be all right. You'll be all right, right? You're a good student. I know you have to go study, though, right? So, so I want to thank you for coming once again, Bucky. Please give Bucky a big hand. 
Thank you, Bucky. Thank you. I have a large glass beaker. This beaker is empty except for? This beaker has a volume of four liters. I want everybody right now to look at this beaker, because if you look at it right now, you just learned how big four liters is. And you cannot unlearn it. You may forget it. That's different. Right? <laughs> you think about that. Into this large beaker, I'm going to put a magnet coated with Teflon. And then I'm going to turn the light switch on so we can see it a little bit, little bit better. And then I'm going to turn the motor on so the bar, the magnetic bar, is spinning. Can you see it spin? Yeah. Is it spinning in a clockwise direction or counterclockwise direction? Clockwise direction if we're looking down at it. What I want you to do now is something we always do in science. I want you to visualize this, this movement of the bar when we're looking down at it, except try to look at it from below. That's the visualization, visualization I want you to go through. So imagine that it's spinning up like this. And in what direction do you see it spinning in? OK, you got me mixed up right now. OK, so we, we've got to straighten this out. So I want everyone in my lab right now, including me, to stick your finger out like this. Everyone. And I want everyone to rotate your finger in a clockwise direction. Hey, I said clockwise. What are you doing? <laughs> I said clockwise. Look, look, I'm doing clockwise like you. I'm doing it clockwise. You see that? See that? Now, what happens when I turn around? What direction am I moving in? OK, you get the point? When you make observations, you have to be sure about <clears throat> the sense that you have in making these observations before you move any forward. All right, so I'm going to take a clear and colorless liquid and put it in a speaker just like that. And I guess it's not so clear right now, but it's a little bit cloudy. That's OK. Uh, and then I'm going to take another clear and colorless liquid and put it in there. Anything interesting happened so far? Well, the volume increased, you know, and what else? You see a little tornado, right? I hope this is the only tornado you see. And then I add the third one, and here's the third one. That's a beautiful blue color, isn't it? You like that? I can't see anything happening. You're not paying attention to me anymore. <laughs> I can't see anything happening. How come I can't see anything happening? I'm not looking. What's the big deal about looking? The last time I looked, the color of the liquid in the beaker was blue. Tell me when to look. Shall I look right now? I don't want to step on anything here and, and, and you know, have an accent. Tell me when to look. Shall I look right now? No? You said no. Yes or no? Yes, right this second. Absolutely. Blue. It's deep blue, almost black. Come on, tell me when to look. Right now? Yes? Yeah. Right now? Yeah? I don't wanna I don't wanna step on anything. Blue, deep blue. Every time I look at it, it's deep blue, right? Right? So oh wow, look at that. What is it what is it that you were doing that I was not doing? You were looking all the time, right? So when we do experiments, we have to focus, we have to concentrate. That's the joy of learning. That's the fun of learning. So it also can be frustrating. Because if you don't make any sense of it, it can cause all kinds of uh, um, issues that we have to deal with. In fact, I want to tell you, this is called a chemical oscillating reaction. It's one of about 50 known such reactions. But this one is special to me for two reasons. The first reason is that it was discovered by two high school teachers. And it's named after them. It's called the briggs rauscher reaction. Briggs and Rauscher taught high school chemistry and physics in Northern California. And in 1973, they published a paper describing this beautiful, captivating behavior that we see right now. The second reason it's special to me is that it took researchers, high-powered researchers, members of the National Academy of Science, it took them nine years to figure out what's going on here. That's why we have to be very patient. We have to be very vigilant when we do experiments, because that's really part of the joy of having fun in any laboratory. It's very, very important to oh, always. Oh, oh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh, oh, oh. Feliz Navidad. Whatever you are. Oh, look at my knocking. Whatever you are. Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh.
Hello, Santa. Hello, Mr. Welcome Santa. to my lab. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so happy to see you. Time. Uh, thank you, Santa. I'm so happy to see you. Did you get my list? That big, long thing? No, it wasn't very oh, long. Well, I have a few. But I I've been good. Haven't I been good? Yeah. You've got something for me, Santa? I'm uh, pretty sure I do. All right. I hope, uh, they I hope packed that's what this I wanted. as best they could. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, there it is. What? It's this box that has, yes, this is for you. This is for me. There's your name on it. Oh, the magic levitation wand. I like this one. This is a lot of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a lot of fun with this. Thank you. Thank you, Santa. And then you had wanted this one. Yes, I want it. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. It's, it looks like a, the pinwheel. Is this the pinwheel that you got me? Yes. And then it has a little button here. Try the button. Try the button. Oh, look at that. That's kind of neat, isn't it? Yeah, what are those colors? Th th those colors are well, they're red and blue and green. Uh, you mean what's causing the colors? Mm -hmm. Well, we have what we have, uh, what I asked for were LEDs. Oh, you mean light emitting diodes? Santa knows science, doesn't he? <laughs> well, it's fun. Yeah. Push the button, right? You push the button. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Lots Th of colors. Thank you. I love colors. Now, Thank you. Now, we got you. a request, and we had to assign the elves this one. And this one, I'm really excited for you. For you. Oh, my goodness. This is the cover design for my book that's coming out in two months. This, <laughs> <laughs> this, and, and this Chemical Demonstrations, a Handbook for Teachers of Chemistry, Volume 5. Comes out in two months. And Santa, this is really, really Look how colorful. colorful it it's is. very colorful. And you and I like colors. We sure do. Right? What's your favorite color? My favorite color is what do you I'm wearing it. So, so is mine. So is mine. But you know, we have other colors in my lab. I'd like to show you one color. Would you please? Do you have time? I have plenty of time. All right. Just for you. All right. All right. Oh, wait a minute. We're going back here? Yes, we're going to do an experiment. Then I better put my safety glasses on. You better on. put your safety goggles in my lab. All right. All right. I so think I lost something. You lost your what? Your I, thought I lost my science is fun button. Well, it's still fun even if you don't wear it. <laughs> All right. So what I want to do is take this uh, clear and colorless liquid and put it in there. And I want to make this liquid turn blue. Blue. Okay. Blue. Yeah. Yeah. Blue. I like that. That's really going to be. So dramatic. I'm going to add. I'm going to add this other ingredient here and mix that. Oh wait a minute. You said it was supposed to turn blue. I did say that, didn't I? You sure did. Well, you know, uh, I need a little help to make this happen. I wonder, Santa, hmm, I wonder if I could borrow something from you. I, I know you have a lot of toys in your bag. Mm -hmm. Could I borrow a battery from one of the toys in your bag? Oh, yes. Yeah, this little girl, she had this is a, a battery. It's a 9 volt. Will that work? Uh, I, I, yeah. OK. I, yeah, so let's, uh, so here we go. I'm going to put this in there. And uh, I did, what color do you see now? It's turning blue. It's turning blue. Look at that. Yeah, this is a battery-operated chemical reaction. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look how blue that is. Yeah. That's great. Good job. But we have a problem. We have a problem? Yeah, I need the battery back, you know. Oh, <laughs> you want the battery back? I want of my course, battery back. Of course, no, 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 no problem, no problem. Here, I'll, I'll pour that blue liquid into this beaker here. Wait a minute. What? What? It was blue. Now it's colorless. Yes, yes. Well, and clear. Yes. But you want the battery back, right? I want the battery back. Right. That's what's important to you, right? Yep. OK. It's important to me, too. So here's your battery back. OK. It's sitting right here. But, OK. So, but you know what? The blue is there. I don't but it's hiding. It. The blue is hiding? It's hiding in there, yeah. Yeah. And you know what? You said this is your favorite color. It sure is. It's right. my favorite color, too. That's so I'm going nice to use this. I'm going to use this okay. to soak the blue color out of there. OK, you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Look at that. My goodness. It was blue, and was now blue. it is all on, what happened to the red? What it's happened all on the red, red rag. You, hmm. you want it to be red? Well, that's my favorite color. No problem. What? <laughs> there it is. Science really is fun, see? Wow, it's nice and red again. But you know what? What? The blue is still in there. Is in where? It's it's in there. I'll I'll, I'll show you. I'll just I'll just take it out and and uh, and I'll, uh, I'll rinse it in here. My goodness! <laughs> Boy, you see there those color changes? That's excellent. <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm Happy 41st. I'm gonna have to go, but Sam, oh. I'm double parked out here with the sleigh on Mills. You know how the Madison police yes, are. Yes, thank you very much, thank Santa. You. Oh, thank I need you. my battery. You need my battery, right. You thank you very battery. much. Thank you, Santa.
Thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Glad to you. Good to you, everyone. Wait for me, Rudolph. I'd like to ask you to focus your attention on this yellow liquid that I have in this flask. And I have also a beaker of this size and a bigger beaker. What I want to do is put the yellow liquid into this beaker uh, without spilling it. And just to make sure that I don't make a, a, a mistake here, I'm going to put the smaller beaker inside the bigger one and just pour the liquid in there because I want to fill it up very carefully all the way to the top. Actually, I want to add some more. <laughs> so all of it is in there. All of it is in there. You see that? Hey, what happened to the beaker? What happened to the small beaker? Is it still there? No. Can you see it? No. It's invisible, right? But it's there. I take this glass rod and I put it in there. See, it taps against it. It taps again. Wait a minute. What happened to the rod? Did the rod disappear too? You can see the rod that's not in the yellow liquid is still visible, but the other one is invisible, right? So let me turn this around a little bit like this, see if this helps a little bit better, all right? So uh, this is a good way to hide things, isn't it? So <laughs> I, I have some more uh, small rods here, glass rods. You see, I want to hide them, so I drop them inside the smaller beaker. And I'll tell you what this yellow liquid is. It's a little bit, it's, a, it's actually quite a bit of, uh, of oil, vegetable oil, with a little bit of baby oil in it. And what I'm dropping in there, and what this smaller beaker is made of, and what this glass rod is made of, uh, they're made of Pyrex. And so they um, uh, reflect and refract light differently. That's why the, you can't see what's inside um, the, uh, the bigger beaker. But I want to assure you, I want to assure you that that beaker is in there. So I want to pick it up and show it to you. It's right there, see? Right there. All right, so I put it back in here because yeah, I want to uh, hide it. And um, so I move on now. Um, you know, some of these experiments you can do at home, uh, but you don't have Pyrex at home, but that's okay. But uh, many other experiments you can do at home if you go to my website, scifund.org, S-C-I-F-U-N.org, uh, and then you can download the experiments and do them uh, at home. So let me now ask you to focus your attention on this glass dish that I have over here. This glass dish has in it what looks like uh, white jello, but it's not really jello. Uh, it looks like white jello. And what I'm going to do is take a clear and colorless liquid, water. I'm going to add the water in there, and we'll see what happens. Can you read that? Yeah. What does it say? Science is fun. And you know what? The, those those uh, white jello-like uh, chunks that were in there, what, what do you think happened to them? They seem to have disappeared, right? But they're still in there. Here, I'll show you. They're still in there. So another thing that everyone who's interested in science can really learn, if you study science and you learn it very well, not only can you make certain things disappear, but you can make other things appear here. To help with the next experiment, I'd like to call on Isabella. Please welcome Isabella. Hi, Isabella. Hi. What have you been working with? I'm working with aldehydes. Al who? Aldehydes. Come on. You know, they're chemicals that smell nice, and some have cool reactions. Oh, yes, yes. I'd like to show you one, but I need one of the chemicals you have. You mean this one here? Yes, that's the one. All right. I got it ready for you. What should I do? Pour it in here. Pour it in there? Yes. I can do that. What are you going to do now? Sh Mix shake. it up? Yep. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Isabella, whoa. That's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. That's really cool, Isabella. Yes, that's one of the cool reactions aldehydes have. You know about aldehydes, huh? Yes. What about them? 
They have cool reactions. They have cool reactions. <laughs> you know what? I like aldehydes. I like this reaction. I like people who work with aldehydes. Is that why you like Alexander Bordin? Yes, that's one of the reasons I like Alexander Bordin. What do you know about Bordin? I know he was a famous music composer, and I learned in the lab that he was a good chemist. He was a good chemist, but most people know about him as a music composer, and he composed a lot of well-known songs. I like his music. My friends and I have been practicing one of his songs. You know, I thought I heard some singing in the, in the, in the lab. Uh, we like working in your lab, and we also like to sing. Well, shall we invite your uh, friends out? Yes. Okay, let's do it. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Madison Youth Choir under the direction of Marcy Russell singing one of the songs that Bordin composed from his famous opera, Prince Igor. So you uh, enjoy being in my lab? So you like working with chemicals? Yes, we do. We like all the elements. All the elements? I bet you don't know their names. Yes, we do. No way, really. Yes, really. Well, please show me then. There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and radium, and nickel, neodymium, and neptunium, germanium, and iron, and
Bravo. Wow. Wasn't that something? Yeah. Did, did they miss any element? <laughs> My goodness, that was really, really something. In fact, it got me so excited now, I forgot what the next experiment is that I should do. So uh, let me see if I can get some help over here. Oh, boy. Yes, I have my book here, Chemical Demonstrations, Volume 3. So with your permission, I'm going to open the book and read the instructions for the next uh, experiment. Is that OK? All right, here we go. <laughs> well, this is not an ordinary book. It's a real hot book. <laughs> Actually, it's just the book covers. On the inside, we have a battery, we have the filament from a light bulb, and a flint that I soaked with lighter fluid when you were not looking. You know about the fire triangle, right? We need three things to have a fire. You need something that burns, you need oxygen, usually from the air, and then you need a source of ignition. What I have not shown you yet, but I will right now, is that at the bottom of the book, there's a small red button. You see it right there? So, when I open the book and I push the button, the chemical energy stored in here is changed into electrical energy. And this filament lights up and <clears throat> also releases heat. Because this filament is like all filaments in all light bulbs. It gives off light, but also gives off some heat. Because it's not 100% efficient. So here we go. Move this away from my face. Push the button. And there it is, right? So you tell me now what happens when I close the book. What happened when I close the book? Just tell me. You know what? Some of you are like the students in my university class. You give a correct answer, but not to the question that was asked. So what happened when I closed the book is that the fire went out. Why did the fire go out? Because there was no oxygen, right? So I opened the book now. Is there oxygen or not? Yes. yes, but there's no fire. How come? What's missing? So what should I do? Push the button away from my face, right? There you see it, OK? We teach about the fire triangle so that we help people learn how to put out fires, not to, chart, not to start fires. All right, <clears throat> I'll put this back here. And now what I want to do is walk over to this part of the lab where I have a special glass assembly. It, there's a funnel on top, uh, spiral glass tubing, and then there's a beaker at the bottom. I have a clear and colored liquid in this flask in my left hand, a clear and colorless liquid in my right hand. And what I want to do is mix those liquids together, and, but we want to do that in the dark. So please turn the lights down, all the way down, all the way down. Yes, 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 yes. So here we go. the lights up, please. This is the annual presentation. I brought you a sample of the element whose atomic number is 41. That's element niobium. That's niobium, right. Well, thank you. There you are. Niobium is a very colorful and a useful element. Uh, it's seldom used all by itself. It's usually mixed with other metals to make an alloy. Uh, it's used to making the superconducting magnets that are used in MRI machines that you find in hospitals. I like what you said about it's being useful, but I, you also said it's colorful. It's, I don't see any color here. Well, you're right. This piece of, uh, of niobium is just gray like every other metal. However, if we give it a very thin coating of niobium oxide, it will become colorful. So you say? Yes, well, I can show you. All right. All we need to do is to take that piece of niobium and put it into a liquid that conducts electricity. I have some here in this dish. And I will clamp it into the liquid, like that. And then I need to pass electric current through it to put the coating on. So I will connect uh, a direct current supply that converts AC into DC. Once That's I from this, this box right here? This box right here, yes. Right. Once I untangle the uh, cable, I'm getting worse. There, quick while I'm ahead. I'll and I need, I need, yes, please un untangle that one for one, you. Yeah. Okay, so I attach the positive one to the niobium 
That makes the niobium the anode. <coughs> and I'll connect the negative one to the other metal because I need to have two electrodes in order to get current to flow through. Well, I see you connected them, but I don't see any color yet. Uh, that's because I haven't turned on the uh, oh. DC. Oh, OK. So let's see. Turn it on, and then I will adjust it. Uh, I'm going to start with a fairly low voltage, and let's turn it on. OK, and we see where it is at 6 or 7 volts. Eh, that's not enough. I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. And while the current is flowing through, there's a chemical process taking place that puts oxide coating niobium oxide coating on the piece of niobium that's in the liquid. Of course, it's in the liquid, so we can't see it now. I'm going to turn it off and take it out and... Uh, yeah, I want to see this. Let's see what it looks like. And there it is. You see it now has a colored coating. It's kind of brownish color. Yeah, that's yeah. not terribly attractive, is it? No, well, well maybe, maybe we can do something else with it. Yeah, let, let's try different voltages. I'll put it Clamp it in again, and uh, whoops, so connect the, the positive to the uh, niobium. There, that'll do. So the voltage has something to do with it? Well, we'll find out. Good. OK, I've turned it up a little bit, and I'll turn it on. And I'll give it a little time. It takes a little time for the coating to appear. And then I'll turn it off. I'm going to try several different voltages. And I'll move it up each time so that I expose a different part. Let's turn up higher voltage, turn it on for a little while, and it develops more coating. The coating is getting thicker. I turn it off, turn it up, move up the strip, turn it on. At an even higher voltage, where are we? Oh, 60 volts already. Yeah, that's high. OK. okay. Oh, and I'll do one more. One I'll more. lift it up a little bit further. And turn up higher voltage still. Turn it on. No, I hear mumbling. I yeah, guess there's yeah, something they're, happening. They're... There must be something happening. OK, let's take it out and have a look. And wow. there it is. It is colorful, just All like you said. All sorts of beautiful colors. Thank you. Thank you. Well. I wanted to show you this because uh, some people are a whole lot better at doing this than I am. Uh, there are actually artists who use this process to make very beautiful jewelry out of niobium by accurately controlling the voltage that they pass through the metal. So this is fish pin is made that way. Very nice, Rod. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rodney. Mm -hmm. Rod mm -hmm. uh, I see that you brought something else with you that has three batteries. Uh, you're right, right. I, bought a, I brought a battery-operated device. Uh, we know in our modern lives we have many battery-operated devices. We have cell phones, and we have uh, computers, and uh, we even have toothbrushes that run on batteries. And a lot of those things have LEDs in them to tell us whether they're working or how they're working. What I have here is a device that has only LEDs and batteries. That's all that's involved. I have four LEDs across the top and three batteries that are connected together in a way that I can use either one, two, or all three batteries to connect them to the LEDs. Now, each battery is 1.2 volts. So if I connect one battery, I will attach 1.2 volts to the LEDs. If I connect two batteries, how many volts? 2.4, somebody's good at arithmetic. How about three batteries? 3.6, exactly. OK, let's see what 3.6 does to the LEDs. Connect them. And what do you see? They're, they're not exactly alike, are they? There are four different colors. The one here is red. The next one is yellow. The next one, green. And the last one, blue. OK, now I'm going to try to see what happens if I connect just one of those batteries, just 1.2 volts. No light at all. That's not very exciting, is it? Now, why does one battery not work? It's because it's not enough. Not enough what? Uh, not enough volts. What the volts do is they tell you how much energy you can extract from the battery. And that's important because light is a form of energy. 
And I have a chart which I want to show you, which tells you a little more about this. And here it is. This shows a rainbow of all the colors of light. And uh, the technical term that scientists use for this is the visible spectrum. And it also shows that red light is low energy and blue light and violet light is high energy. And the energy increases as you go from red to orange to yellow, green, blue, and violet. And on the edge here, I have an indication of how many volts corresponds to each color. And you can see 1.75 volts corresponds to red. To get red light, you need to use 1.75 volts. That's why now nothing is happening, because that's only 1.2 volts. And all of the LEDs came on when I applied 3.6, because that's more than it takes to make violet light. What do you think will happen if I connect two batteries? 2.4 volts. Will they all go on? No. Will any of them go on? Yes. yes. Will the red one go on? Yes. yes. Will the yellow one go on? Yes. yes. Will the blue one go on? No. no. Will the green one go on? Yes. Uh, some are saying yes, some are saying no, and some are saying maybe. How do we find out? <laughs> Let's do it, exactly. OK, so I will connect just two batteries. And what do we see? Just as you said, the red one lights up, the yellow one lights up, the blue one does not, and in this case, the green one doesn't either because it's not quite enough energy for this green LED. So if you have any devices that have blue LEDs in them, now you know why they take at least three volts. All right, very nice. Thank you very much, Rod. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have been a really great audience. Uh, and I want to thank you for coming here and to uh, show you my grand finale for this very special occasion that you came to share with me. I'm going to take uh, this uh, small amount of yellow liquid and put it in here. <laughs> and I'm going to put this one in here. <laughs> and the third one in here. Thank you all for coming. No matter what you do, remember that science is fun. Thank you very much for coming. Come on out here. Come on out. This program is available on DVD for $30 from Educational Innovations. For ordering information, call them toll-free at 1-888-912-7474 or check their website at www.teachersource.com. <laughs>